Let me guess, you didn't pop a tank buster. Oh, nah, man. See, that's why I'm making the video. You use you use TBN on Living Dead. <sighs> you need to watch my video. Ways of tanking by Zemo. Okay, there's ways of tanking. Healing, shielding, mitigation. Now you see how shielding is in a different category from healing. Okay, that's because they're different things. I don't give a shit what FF Logs calculates. The fact that FF Logs calculates a fucking heal is the same thing as a shield is ridiculous. It's absolutely fucking stupid. If anyone wants to dispute me on this, I ask you this question. What happens when you use TBN with Walking Dead? You die. What do you need to do to cleanse your Walking Dead? You need to heal it. And <laughs> shield is in the heal. Shield? No eel, okay? Healing, I'll give some examples. Blood wetting, shielding, blood wetting. I just wanna show how powerful warrior tanking is right now because it's absolutely fucking disgusting. Okay, so we'll give you another example. Healing, heart of corundum. Shielding, brutal shell. Mitigation, heart of corundum. Here, I'm gonna put this in parentheses because some people seem to think that TBN is a heal when TBN is not a heal. It's nowhere close to a heal. It's not kinda like a heal. It's literally not a fucking heal, you idiot. TBN is a shield. TBN is also not mitigation. Mitigation works differently than shields. Here, we'll put, um, <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I just really like shitting on Dark Knight CDs because Dark Knight sucks ass defensively. Let me explain to you guys why it's important that you're able to distinguish healing from shielding from mitigation, okay? Healing, it just heals you. Shielding increases your EHP, which is effective HP. And mitigation also, it's kind of like EHP too. It reduces damage taken. Shields are better for one hit. The higher damage is, the less effective shields are, but the more effective mitigation is. Healing, let's say that you're tanking something and you have 50k HP and the tank buster hits you for 50k. Well, obviously the healing is going to do fuck all. You can be fully topped, but if you only have 50k HP and the, and the 50k tank buster hits you, you're dead, right? Doesn't matter. So this is where healing fails. Shielding, assuming you get the full value, it's always going to be used up. So basically like... Healing and shielding have a cap on what they can absorb or what they can help you tank. The cap on healing is your HP bar. So let's say you have 50K health. Well, the amount of healing that you can receive only up to 50K. You can't heal any more than that, but a shield will let you go above that 50K. So let's say you're fully healthy and you have a TB in on yourself. Okay, well, that's gonna be like a 12.5K shield. So you're gonna have 12.5K plus 50K. So it's like 62 and a half K. So you're gonna live with the 12.5K. So the shielding will allow you to go over your maximum HP bar. And mitigation, it kind of works like in the opposite effect. Instead of being based on you, it's based on the damage itself, right? Okay, so let's say you pop Rampart on a 50k hit. Okay, well that's gonna be, what, like 10k. So you're gonna mitigate 10k. So you'll live with like 10k. Now the reason why shielding is not like healing is because once that shield is gone, then you're mitigating zero damage. But healing, let's say you pop like wrong tuition during like an Ockmorn. Each attack that you get, you heal up. So you get hit and then you heal. Then you get hit, then you heal. That healing that is in between or on the hit, that counts as your HP, that counts as your life. That is why shielding is different than healing because once that initial hit hits you, the shield is now gone. It's no longer on you and it's not mitigating anything else. So that's why shielding is typically worse on multi-hit busters. And that's where mitigation gets better is because it will always mitigate every single hit. So let's say you get hit for 20K, 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 20K. Okay, well the shield's gonna break on the first one, but the mitigation is gonna be there for every single one of those hits. And the healing, if you heal in between those hits, they're gonna be there too. So that's why shielding kind of sucks on multiple hits, which is this big misconception that TBN is so good in dungeons. Like, oh, it always pops. Yeah, good, it should. It pops in like one second. It's because you're taking so much fucking damage that now you have nothing left. Like, yeah, it should, it should pop. <laughs> Just because it pops doesn't mean that it's overpowered. That's what it's doing what it should do. See, here's the thing. All of these are really good and they're all super good for different situations. So like, obviously for a single hit tank buster, shielding is probably gonna be the best, but healing is gonna be the worst because if you don't have any shielding or mitigation on a tank buster and you just have full HP, you're probably just dead.
Now, let's say that you don't die. Let's say that you live with like 10k HP, but you're able to heal yourself back up. Then in that case, yeah, sure, healing's actually the best because you've healed 90% of your fucking HP pool. It's important to know because shielding and mitigation work really well together. So when you pop like TBN plus Rampart, that's better than popping like Rampart plus Sheltron, for example, or some shit like that. Because mitigation in this game, it, it's like multiplicative. So like 20% plus 20% is not actually 40%. You know, 20 plus a 20 is like 36 or something. So like, it's really important to know this because shields stack better with mitigation than mitigation on mitigation. And obviously you can't stack like some shields, but some shields you can. So like you can have like an ad low plus a TB and that's really good. The way that you tank in this game, it's a lot more in depth, like in terms of the different ways that you tank. What I mean by that is, okay, so yesterday I was telling you guys about this shit. This is the most important thing, right? As long as you don't die. So what exactly does that mean? That means that Thrill of Battle plus Equilibrium is a pretty fucking disgusting combo. Let's say that you have 50k HP, something hits you for 50k. With Thrill of Battle, you're obviously going to live. You're going to have like 10k HP, and then after that 10k HP, you're going to use Equilibrium. Well, that Equilibrium is buffed by 20%. It's buffed on the initial hit, buffed on the hot. So that health that you gain after the hit, that counts as you dealing with the tank buster. In this game, there's three steps to a tank buster. Before the tank buster, the tank buster hit itself, and after the tank buster. The most important parts of those three are before and after. The actual buster doesn't really matter too much. And the reason why the actual buster doesn't matter is because tanks and healers are so strong that the power of a single cooldown doesn't really matter at all. What do I mean by that? Let's say that um, Heart of Corundum has 30% mit plus like a 900 potency XCOG, while Blood Wedding has 20% plus a shield. Now that shield that you get, a lot of people really underestimate that shield. That shield's like 10% mit, but it stacks better than 30% because the shield stacks better with mitigation. Does that make sense? Explain block, please. Yo, you know what? No meme, I'm glad you asked that question because this really isn't relevant anymore. But how this game registers damage is, you know, just like any other game, you know, whenever something hits you, it rolls. And when it rolls, the very first thing it registers is a crit. So let's say that you pop Sheltron. It blocks everything, right? Well, no, not really. If you pop Sheltron, you can actually still be crit. And a lot of people don't know that. Now, that's how it used to be, like last expansion, every other expansion before. I haven't tested it this expansion expansion, but I imagine it's the same because I imagine that's like very old code. I mean, I'm not a coder, so I don't know if it would be hard to change, but bosses don't really crit you anymore. Back in the day, you know, back in Heaven's Ward, you know, Realm Reborn, bosses could crit you. And if you were to block an attack, but they crit, the crit would override the block. Yeah, so it's relevant in UCOB. Basically, there used to be a tanking cooldown called Awareness. And what Awareness did was it negated all crits on you. I know that doesn't really make much sense now. Like it doesn't really like who cares now. But um, back in the day, that really mattered because there were bosses bosses that would guarantee the crit. And if you could mitigate that crit with awareness, it was really good. It was very value. This is how the game checks. First, it rolls and checks if there's a crit. Then I think it rolls to see if you evade it. Then it rolls to see if you block it. Then it rolls to see if you parry it. Okay, this evade and crit, it's been so long and because crit really hasn't been relevant for a very long time. So the evade actually might come first. Yeah, actually the evade does come first. I know the evade comes first because back in the day, back when ninjas were good, they used to have this move called perfect dodge. And when you used perfect dodge, it would literally dodge the next attack. It didn't matter. It could be a tank buster. It could be an auto attack. It didn't matter. Whenever you use perfect dodge, you always evaded the next attack. This evade, crit, block, parry most of this shit doesn't matter like this stuff right here doesn't really matter anymore because you don't dodge any attacks and you don't really get crit anymore because they took that away from bosses bosses don't even crit you anymore so the only thing that really matters is block and parry these obviously don't stack you can only do one or the other so if you pop sheltron you're never going to parry that next attack you're going to block it obviously but if you don't pop sheltron and something hits you if it's physical that's another thing to keep in mind too is that parry is only physical while block is magic and physical. If something hits you and you're on a paladin, first you roll to see if you block it. Okay. Do you block it? No. Okay. Now you roll to see if you parry it. Do you parry it? You know, yes or no. This is how the game checks shit. But like I said, the evade part doesn't really matter anymore. And the crit part doesn't really matter anymore. And honestly, you could probably just take this out because 
it hasn't mattered for a really long time. It's just important to distinguish the different types because all of these are different. If anyone says shield is a heal, they're fucking stupid. They're dumb. They're dumb as shit. Don't listen to that idiot. If anyone says healing is mitigation, they're fucking stupid. They're dumb. Don't listen to that idiot. Healing has its advantages when you don't die. The main thing here is as long as you don't die. Let's talk about shielding for a second. The advantages to shields. They stack better with mitigation. They're arguably the strongest on single hit. They have like severe diminishing returns on multi-hit. Its weakness is it is not a heal. So any heal-like related mechanics in this game, which there are quite a few, there's white hole, there's walking dead, all of that shit. Shielding does literally nothing for, literally nothing. It is horrible. It's kind of ironic that people think that shielding is like healing because they're actually the complete fucking opposite in terms of like the way that you tank in this game because shielding has nothing to do with actual healing. So it's kind of funny that people actually think that. <laughs> I wonder if these people play the game. But uh, anyway, yeah, so shielding is very good on single hits. It's extremely good. It's also very, very good when you stack it with mitigation. There's no diminishing returns. I want to say shielding is probably the best on single hits. Mitigation is still good on single hits, but typically the shields will provide you with more EHP. Mitigation is stuff like Rampart, 20% damage reduction. It's all the damage reduction abilities, okay? Mitigation, it's a flat percentage. So let's take the same 50k attack. You're going to mitigate 10 10k of that, right? So you're going to be left with 10k HP. Now the shield, let's take TBN, you're going to be left with like 12.5 HP. So you have a little bit more HP with TBN than you do with like a rampart. So what are mitigation strengths? Mitigation doesn't really have a downside except for abilities that reduce your HP to one. On terms of like white hole mechanics, I think mitigation is probably the worst, but it really shines on multi-hit because it works for every single hit. Healing. This is literally anything that increases your raw HP. Let's say that you're full health and you have 50k HP and you take a 50k hit. Well, you're dead. However, let's say that instead of a 50k hit, it's a 40k hit. Well, you live with 10k HP. And I know that's a lot of damage, but if you are able to heal yourself after the buster, remember the three parts of the tank buster, before the buster, the buster itself, and after the buster. And in my opinion, the most important part is afterwards, how you deal with it, what happens afterwards. Either you're alive or there's an Asmund swap, one or the other, all right? Now, ideally, you don't want to do that type of tank swap, but hey man, it happens, okay? It's happened to me, it's happened to other people, and I swap Dom. Healing is also good on like multiple hits, but where healing fails is when it caps. Healing, there's a cap because the cap is your raw HP. So if you have 50k HP, then the cap of healing that you can receive is 50k HP. Where does the healer come into the picture? Before, during, or after? It comes in all three. I mean, well, I guess the first two. Before and after because the healer sometimes will need to prep you for a tank buster and then the healer will need to take care of you after the tank buster. It also depends on the buster. I mean, but then again, if you're you're a warrior main then your dick is fucking massive and you don't need no fucking healer okay you get your fucking heels off of me you fucking green dps piece of shit you get that shit off me i'm the fucking heal I, i'm the tank i'm the dps and i'm the healer okay any healing that goes on me yo you put that shit in the goddamn suggestion box and i'll open that shit up when i feel comfortable and i might look at it i might maybe but until then you just keep spamming your fucking button and you know your place i'm the healer. See, if you're a warrior, that's how it is. If you're a dark knight, then you're like, oh God, please fucking heal me. Please heal my living dead. Please heal my living dead. Please heal my living dead. Well, didn't heal living dead. I tried using TBN, but I found out that wasn't a heal. Shit, I used the wrong screen. Pretend you saw the graveyard. Shit, we're in the grave. Oh, you tried it too? Yeah, I can't believe it, man. Like, dude, somebody told me TBN was like a heal, man. I tried to, I used it all myself and tried to heal living dead and it didn't work. And, and now I'm in the grave, man. Uh, I don't really know what else to say, but I really feel stupid. I feel like a big fucking dumbass for thinking TBN was a heal, man. Fucking crazy, dude. Fucking crazy. And now I'm dead. And now I'm dead. I'm in the grave. You know, so that's what happens. So all of these are different ways that you tank. And it's not just about the number itself because all of these cooldowns have strengths and they all have weaknesses. And it's about how you use them in each like specific situation. But to wrap this up, it's very important just to know the differences because these are all very different. Healing is not the same as shielding. They're different. It's not kind of like each other. They're different. The same with mitigation. They all have strengths and they all have weaknesses. Normally in this game, how you handle tank busters, the 
strength of a certain cooldown doesn't matter, which is why I think TBN is really overhyped. When I say that the strength of a single cooldown doesn't matter is because it's how you handle tank busters and how you handle incoming damage. If it's a tank buster, chances are you're going to pop everything you have or you're just going to invuln it. You typically want to invuln busters and save your cooldowns for auto attacks actually in this game because a buster will typically force you to tank swap and if it doesn't, you can tank swap anyway. It also allows for more healer DPS. Let's say you just home gang the buster. Well, the healer doesn't have to heal you because there's a swap, right? They don't have to give a fuck about you. So that saves like a couple healer GCDs there. Whereas if you mitigate the buster, they probably have to spin resources. Now it might not be GCDs now, but it might come back later. So let's say they spend an off GCD resource to heal you at that particular time. But then like a minute later, when another tank buster happens, and if that tank doesn't invuln, then they're going to have to heal that tank because they already spent the resources on you. So they might not be available. Now it's a case by case situation. Tank busters vary from 30 seconds to 45 seconds to 10 seconds. There's a lot of factors here, but my point being is, is that typically in this game, when you see a buster, you either pop everything or you invuln it. You save your cooldowns for auto attacks and like, you know, chip damage and shit. So that that way regens, they will heal you better. They'll be more effective. Tank busters are typically pretty easy to deal with. They're probably the least scary part about the fight. And because of all what I said, the strength of a single cooldown doesn't matter. So let's say there was a cooldown in the game that prevented 50% damage. 50%. Do you think that that cooldown would be any better than just an invuln? No, it's like the same because you're either going to pop the 50% cooldown or you're going to stack three together. It's going to equal the same shit. So that's what I mean, like the strength of a single cooldown, it doesn't matter as much anymore because tanks have so many. They have so many. It's more about the entire kit as a whole and how it works together. I wanted to like go over this because whew, I've been hearing some very, very, very concerning dumb things. And I have to let you guys know, don't stray from the light. Don't get debated. It's just very important that you guys understand that these are three entirely different ways of tanking. They are ways of tanking by Zemo, but they're different ways. 